oh my god, you just stop and you go, this is the coolest gig that we have. Like I like I love the fact that I get to do this. Giancarlo, Kevin, and Moses, congratulations to the three of you on this film. I'm a huge fan of the X trilogy and I loved Maxine. I'm so excited for audiences to see it. So congratulations to the three of you, first of all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It looked like you guys had a blast at the premiere last night, too. Um, a big part of this film is Maxine getting her first big chance on a real Hollywood set. And Elizabeth Debicki's character, the director, kind of takes her under her wing. I know it's probably hard to pinpoint one person in your career when you were starting out, but is there someone that you remember kind of taking you under their wing when you were on your first big Hollywood set? Giancarlo, I'll begin with you. Yeah, I had a manager when I was really young named Toby Gibson. She's passed on now, and she was always a great source of inspiration. She would tell me things like, um, when you go in for the audition, don't speak, don't talk, and um, just kind of use few words. And I said, Toby, why? Because you're too intelligent, you're too smart, and you're going up for all these very stereotypical you know, hoodlum characters. So oh, the God. less you say, the oh. more chance you are of having getting the gig. And you know, look, oh, she, my God. yeah, yeah, how about that? Uh, I love Toby, she was really realistic about that. And when I finally made it to my big first really huge feature film called Taps, she was of course very proud of me and I was really happy to be there. What an awesome story, thank you for sharing that. Kevin, what about for you? Uh, let's see, well, I had a moment, it was a little bit later in my career. Um, and first off, let me just start by saying, I was someone who moved to New York, the suitcase and a dream. And according to me, I knew everything there was to know about acting. I knew how to act. I knew the business. I didn't want advice from anybody. I was like, when people would even attempt to give me advice, I would just shut them down. Agents, managers, whatever it was. And I, after, quite a lot of years of like failing, I started to think maybe I do need to get some little bit of help from people that know more about this, that actually have put in the 10,000 hours that, you know, that I had. You know, Footless was a big hit. My career was really, after that, kind of on a downslide, not going well. And I had an agent that said to me, you know, you're a character actor, you're not a leading man. And, and so, that really changed the trajectory of what I was doing. And I was like, you know what, that's right. You're absolutely right about that. And the very first thing that I did after kind of doing a little bit of a, a, a switch of gears was JFK. And that completely changed, um, that, that honestly leads directly to something like Maxine. I mean, I this is my first movie, so I think I need a little bit more time to really like. Let me give you some advice. <laughs> that out, but actually, I would say there's there's what a staggering cast Maxine has, and there are uh, quite a few legends in it, and I've been really embraced as like the random new kid on set. I was really surprised by how nice uh, Mr. Bacon was to me, <laughs> and how like welcoming uh, Giancarlo was, and. I think everyone on set was really just like, nobody was like, and who the fuck are you? <laughs> everyone was like, all right, kid, come on. <laughs> and, and I really appreciated that. Kevin, last question for you. I love this sequence between your character and Maxine at the Bates Motel, the Psycho House. I've been there on the Warner Brothers lot. It's one of the most iconic set pieces of all time. What was it like? filming there, take me back to set that day. Well, I know that uh, you will soon have this, and I know you've had this a million times, where you're like, you're shooting a scene and you go, oh my God, you just stop and you go, this is the coolest gig that we have. Like, I, like, I love the fact that I get to do this. That scene was exactly that. I mean, I've spent so much time walking those streets, you know, uh, on back on the back lot in LA, and it never stops to be like a magical place for me. So to just chase me all through that, all through that back lot was really a lot of fun. It was just a great, great day. Although I have to say, we were really running like full out. And I said to Ty, you know, listen, you know, you know, you know I'm 65, right? Um, I'm doing my best to keep up with her, but 
you, you know, I'm going to need a little bit of a break every once in a while, uh, or some PF flyers to run faster and jump higher. And he actually, <laughs> as a rap gift, he bought me a pair of PF flyers. <laughs> oh my God. Amazing. What a cool rap gift. I love uh, that. Well, they are rapping me. Congratulations again to the three of you. And Kevin, I have to say, I love your daughter and smile. I think she's an incredible same. actress and gives an amazing performance. And you have to tell her that because that's another one of my favorite horror films in recent years. I'll pass it on and thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so she's awesome. And John Carlo, your character here and Gus from Breaking Bad, they need to get together because I think they could fuck some people up. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Congratulations again. And it was lovely chatting with the three of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.